Karl Hadek, Leo Schlachter, The Wanderer into the Void, June 1923. I can neither supplement nor complete the comprehensive and deeply impressive report of our vulnerable leader Comrade Zetkin on international fascism that hammer meant to crush the head of the proletariat, but which will fall upon the petty bourgeois class who are wielding it in the interests of large capital. I could not even follow it clearly because there, ho there hovered before my eyes the corpse of the German fascist, our class enemy, who was sentenced to death and shot by the hirelings of French imperialism, that powerful organization of another section of our enemy class. Throughout the speech of Comrade Zetkin on the contradictions with fa within fascism, the name of Schlachter and his tragic fate was in my head. We ought to remember him here when we are def defining our attitude towards fascism. The story of this martyr of German nationalism should not be forgotten nor passed over with a mere phrase. It has much to tell us, and much to tell the German people. We are not sentimental romanticists who forget friendship when its object is dead, nor are we diplomats who say, by the graveside say nothing but good or remain silent. Schlachter, a courageous soldier of the counter-revolution, deserves to be sincerely honored by us, the soldiers of the revolution. Fresca, who shared his views, published in 1920, a novel in which he described the life of an officer who fell in the fight against Spartacus. Fresca named his novel The Wanderer into the Void. If those German fascisti who honestly, who honestly fought to serve the German people fail to understand the significance of Schlachter's fate, Schlachter died in vain and on, and on his tombstone should read The Wanderer into the Void. Germany lay crushed. Only fools believe that the victorious capitalist Entente would treat the German people differently from the way the victorious German capitalists treated the Russian and Romanian people. Only fools or cowards who, who feared to face the truth could believe in the promises of Wilson and the declarations that the Kaiser and not the German people would have to pay the price of defeat. In the East, a people was at war, starving, freezing. It, it fought against the Entente on 14 fronts. That was Soviet Russia. One of these fronts consi consisted of German officers and German soldiers. Schlachter fought in Mendem's volunteer group and, and Mandem's volunteer corps, which stormed the Riga. We do not know whether the young officer understood the significance of his acts, but the then German commissar, the social democrat Win Winning, and General von der Gols, the commander of the Baltic troops, knew what they were doing. They sought to gain the friendship of the Entente by performing the work of hirelings against the Russian people, in order that the German bourgeoisie should not pay the victors, the indemnites of war, the higher young German blood, which had, been spared, which had been spared the bullets of the Great War, to fight against the Russian people. We do not know what Schlachter fought at this period. His leader, Medem, later admitted that he marched through the Baltic into the void. Did all the German nationalists understand that? At the funeral of Schlachter in Munich, General Ludendorff spoke, the, the same Ludendorff Dorf, who even today is offering himself to England and to France as the leader of a crusade against Russia. Schlachter was mourned by the Stein, Steins press. Herr Steins was the colleague in the Alpina Montana of Schneider Kossot, the armor, the assassin of Schlachter. Against whom did the German people wish to fight? Against the Entente capitalists or against the Russian people? With whom did they wish to ally themselves with the Russian workers and peasants in order to throw off the yoke of Entente capital for the enslavement of the Germans and Russian peoples? Schlachter is dead. He cannot supply the answer. His comrades in arms swore at his gravesite to carry on his fight. They must supply the answer? Against whom and on whose side? Schlachter went from the Baltic to the Ruhr, not in the year 1923 but in the year 1920. Do you know what that meant? He took part in the attack of German capital upon the Ruhr workers. He fought in the ranks of the troops whose task it was to bring the miners of the Ruhr under the heel of the Iron and Coal Kings. The troops of Waters, in, in those in whose ranks he fought, fired the same leaded bullets with, with which General de Gout quelled the Ruhr workers. We have no reason to believe that it was from selfish motives that Schlachter helped to subdue the starving miners. The way in which he risked his life speaks on his behalf and proves that he was convinced he was serving the German people. 
but Schlachter thought he was best serving the people by helping to restore the mastery of the class which had hid her to led the German people and had brought such terrible misfortune upon them. Schlachter regarded the working class as the mob that must be governed, and in this he shared the view of Count Reventlow, who, cla who calmly declared that no war against the Entente was possible until the, until the internal enemy had been overcome. The internal enemy for Schlachter was a revolutionary working class. Schlachter could see with his own eyes the results of, he, of this policy when he returned to the Ruhr in 1923 during the occupation. He could see that even if the workers were united against French imperialism, no single people could fight alone. He could see the profound mistrust of the workers towards the German government and the German bourgeoisie. He could see how greatly the cleavage in the nation hampered its defensive power. He could see more. Those who share his views complained of the passivity of the German people. How can a defeated working class be active? How can a working class be active which has been disarmed and from whom it is, dem it is demanded that they shall allow themselves to be exploited by, by profiteers and speculators? Or could the activity of the German working masses be replaced by the activity of the German bourgeoisie? Schlachter read in the newspapers how the very people who pretended to be the patrons of the German nationalist movement sent securities abroad so that they might be enriched and the country impoverished. Schlachter certainly could have no hope in these parasites. He was spared reading in the press how the representative of the German bourgeoisie, Dr. Lutherbuch, turned to his executioners with the request that they should permit the iron and steel kings to shoot down sons of Germany, the men who were carrying out the resistance in the Ruhr with machine guns. Now that the German resistance, through the ra rascally trick of Dr. Lutherbuch, and still, and still more through the economic policy of the possessing classes, has turned into a farce, we ask the honest, patriotic masses who are anxious to fight against the French imperialist invasion, how will you fight, on whose support will you rely? The struggle against Entente imperialism is a war, even though the guns are silent. There can be no war at the front when there is unrest in the rear. A minority can be kept under in the rear, but not a majority. The majority of the German people are the working men, who must fight against the poverty and want with which the German which the German bourgeoisie is bringing upon them. If the patriotic circles of Germany do not make up their own minds to make the cause of the majority of the nation their own, and so create a front against both the Entente and German capital, then the path of Schachter was the path into the void and Germany, in the face of foreign invasion, and the perpetual menace of the victors, will be transformed into a field of bloody internal conflict and it will be easy for the enemy to defeat her and destroy her. When after Jena, Gneisnau and Schanhorst asked themselves how the German people were to be raised from their defeat, they replied, only by making the peasants free from their former submission and slavery. Only the free German peasantry can lay the foundations for the emancipation of Germany. What the German peasantry meant for the fate of the German nation at the beginning of the 19th century, the German working class means at the beginning of the 20th century. Only with it can Germany be freed from the fetters of slavery, not against it. Schlachter's comrades talked of war at his gravesite. They swore to continue the fight. It had to be conducted against an enemy that was armed to the teeth while Germany was unarmed and beaten. If the talk of war is not to remain an empty phrase, if it is not to consist of bombing columns that blow up bridges but not the enemy, that derail trains but cannot check the armored trains of Anton capital, then a number of conditions must be fulfilled. The German people must break with those who have not only led it into defeat, but who are perpetuating the defeat and the defenselessness of the German people by regarding the majority of the German people as the enemy. This demands a break with the peoples and parties whose faces act upon other peoples like a Medusa head, mobilizing them against the German people. Only when the German cause becomes the cause of the German people, only when the German cause becomes the fight for the rights of the German people, will the German people win active friends. The powerful nation cannot endure without friends, all the more so a nation which is defeated and surrounded by enemies. If Germany wants to be in the position to fight, it must create a united front of workers, and the brain workers must unite with the hand workers and form a solid phalange. The condition of the brain workers cries out for disunion. Only old prejudices stand in the way. United into a victorious working people, 
Germany will be able to draw upon great resources of resisting power, which will be able to remove all obstacles. If the cause of the people is made the cause of the nation, then the cause of the nation will become the cause of the people. United into a fighting nation of workers, it will gain the assistance of other peoples who are also fighting for their existence. Whoever is not prepared to fight in this way is capable, is capable of deeds of desperation, but not of a serious struggle. That is what the German Communist Party and the Communist International have to say, have to say at Schlachter's graveside. It has nothing to conceal, for only the complete truth can penetrate into the suffering, eternally disintegrated masses of Germany. The German Communist Party must declare openly to the nationalist petty bourgeois masses, whoever is working in service of the profiteers, the speculators and the iron and coal magnates, to enslave the German people and to drive them into disparate adventures will meet the resistance of the German Communist workers who will oppose violence by violence. Whoever, from lack of comprehension, allies himself with the hirelings of capital, we shall fight with every means in our power. But we believe that the great majority of the nationalist-minded masses belong not to the camp of the capitalists, but to the camp of the workers. We want to find, and we shall find, the path to these masses. We shall do all in our part to make men like Schlachter, who are prepared to, do, to go to their deaths for a common cause, not wanderers in the, into the void, but wanderers into a better future for the whole of mankind, that they should not spill their hot, unselfish blood for the profit of the coal and iron barons, but in the cause of the great toiling German people, which is a member of the family of peoples fighting for their emancipation. The truth the Communist Party will declare to the great masses of the German people, for it is not a party fighting for a crust of bread on behalf of the industrial workers, but a party of the struggling proletariat fighting for its emancipation, an emancipation that is identical with the emancipation of the, of the whole people, of all who toil and suffer in Germany. Schlachter himself can un, cannot now hear this declaration, but we are convinced that there are hundreds of Schlachters who will hear it and understand it.